close and comfy with Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Hey, everybody, this is Peter Charcalis. How are you today? I've got a special guest today with the Artisan Spotlight, and this time the spotlight is on this guy. So this is Chris Cullen Hello, from everyone. Katie's Bubbles. So Chris, how are you, buddy? Doing well, Peter. Good to you? see you. Good to see you. So we're in we're in the presidential suite. That this is <laughs> so this is like on the 26th floor, overlooking beautiful downtown Boston. He's got a jacuzzi over there, and so this is a this is a quite nice setup you got here. You have one hell of an imagination. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you are in Forbes, so uh, well, of course. Yeah. So you know, it's a. I was reading the, uh, that article. It was really interesting how you've only been in business since 2011. 2012 was when the business was officially formed with the state of New Jersey. Mm. And you were a Sears guy. Yes, I worked for Sears for almost eight years. Yeah. So how do you go from working at Sears? Retail? I was a retail manager, yes. Yeah. So working as a retail manager at Sears to become Katie's Bubbles. Well, Katie's Bubbles was formed before I left Sears. Ah. Um, uh, the actual company formation, it was formed as a way for me to be able to support my odd hobby of soap making because um, without actually selling product to put money back into it, things get very expensive quickly. Mm. Between all of the, the base oils and um, fragrancing, um, it can add up. And uh, when you have Mrs. Bubbles yelling at you that you're spending too much money on things and not getting a return on it, um, <laughs> um, I started Katie's Bubbles so I could go out and legally sell a couple bars here and there to be able to put more back into it to get better quality ingredients and so on and so forth um, which actually worked out after I was um, downsized from Sears I was able to then take everything I had learned through my research and everything um, and then put a full press into Katie's Bubbles and turn it into what it is today. Mm. What, did you, what was the first soap that you came up with? Uh, Do you remember? The first bar soap? Uh, first shaving soap. First shaving soap I came up with was um, I named it after uh, the barbershop I went to as a little kid. It was called the Seabreeze Barbershop. It was a combination of um, um, pig fat lard, mm -hmm. um, cocoa butter, uh, some palm kernel oil, and a couple other things. Um, and it worked pretty well, and I actually still have a couple pucks of it curing. Do you really? Yes, I do. I used one uh, a couple months ago um, in one of my shave of the days, and uh, one of the gentlemen that we met with last night here in Boston um, actually brought that up to me and asked me how lard works out in a, in a shaving soap and it it works <laughs> mm. nice you know it, it's so we, I mentioned we're in Boston so the reason why we're here is there's that the uh, Northeast so this is the second annual Northeast yes. meetup right this is the second annual meetup last year's was a much smaller event um, it was in terms of representation from the industry it was myself and Will Carius from Barrister and Mann um, and then it was a, a bunch of guys from the local area uh, as well as uh, Jason Spiegelman had come up from Maryland. Mm. So all those guys are, are coming up, plus about 40 more. <laughs> yes, yeah, we had a, we had 14 or 15 people last year, um, and I think our dinner reservation for tonight sits somewhere around 50. Mm. So it's really a, a good testament, I think, on how the community has not only grown, but kind of come together. Yes. You know, everyone will sing Kumbaya tonight. And, uh... well, I don't know about us singing. Uh, if I start singing, they're going to tell me to stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to meeting. Well, these guys, you know, it's funny. You speak to people, you PM people a lot, right? And you become friends with people, and you never even meet them. You may never meet them in the course of your whole life because right. maybe, well, they're, maybe they're just a long distance away. Right. But with the relationships that are built through these online groups, um, when you finally meet somebody for the first time that you've been talking to for two or three years, um, you know so much about them. It's like you've been best friends forever. It's it's true. It's true. I mean, I felt that way when I met um, Jorge for the first time, who came up from Mech. I really wish he was coming up for, I, for this trip. I wish he was up here as well. He's a he's a good friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right, we miss you, buddy. And uh, so maybe next next, ne next time, no extra vacation, so you have the time to come up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm really looking forward to um, well seeing Rudd's. So when we had the meetup at Pastors, mm -hmm. the whole um, the sh uh, shave market group, were, the, the admins were there except Rudd's. Except Rudd's, because right? Rudd's unfortunately had a prior commitment; he couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna we're gonna see him tonight. A whole bunch of guys. Yep, uh, we'll actually be seeing them shortly. Yeah. Um, because they'll be in town in about a half hour. Mm. 
Yeah, is that is that your cue to, to hurry this along? No, we, 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 we've, we've got plenty of time to work with. Yeah, so I told them I have nothing prepared. We're just kind of winging it. So we're just we're just having a conversation. Yes. So um, for those that don't know, tell the story of um, the name Katie's Bubbles and well, who it's named after. Katie's Bubbles is named after my daughter. But the real reason I got into soap making was because of my son. Um, my son Christopher is autistic. Uh, and when we first found out that um, he was having developmental learning issues and so on and so forth, um, we started working with the state of New Jersey and the different programs that were available. Uh, and his early intervention aide pretty much told us that he's autistic, they won't give him the diagnosis until he's two, um, but that's what it's going to be. Um, so as soon as we had found that out, Mrs. Bubbles had uh, started looking into ways to help out and learn more about autism, um, and she uh, asked me to find jigsaw puzzle piece molds that are made out of silicon so she can melt crayons in them to sell at a fundraiser. Um, because of course the jigsaw puzzle piece is the symbol for Autism Speaks and some of the other mm -hmm. autism organizations. Um, well, when I had finally found a silicone mold that was the, the puzzle piece, it said it could be used to make soap. Um, and I had to scratch my head and say, what the heck's going on here? Um, and then, hey, Google. Uh, how do I make soap? And I taught myself how to make bar soap. And it went on from there. And as I said before, um, it gets expensive, so you have to find a way to put back into it. Um, and being that so much in our world was focused around Christopher, um, I named the company after our daughter so that she had something that, that really made her feel special because of the fact that every day it was um, an early intervention, it was uh, occupational therapy, it was physical therapy, um, it was a fundraiser, it was something else revolved around Christopher, mm -hmm. um, and she was feeling lost in the mix. So therefore, to, 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 make, her, um, to make her feel warm and fuzzy, um, I named it after her, and it, I was given quite a bit of flack when I first decided to launch um, into the, the men's grooming uh, part of uh, the business um, by certain people out there. I won't mention you, Chris Bailey. Um, uh, well, no, he, he busts your chops about the, the French names. Yeah, he busts my... No, but when I first started, he, he had actually said to me, and a couple others had said, um, would you think about re-imaging, rebranding because of uh, the fact that, hey, you're trying to sell shaving soap and your company name is Katie's Bubbles. Mm. Um, and I s told him there's a reason why the company's named that and um, I'm not changing it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get the name known um, so that this way when we get down the line, it doesn't matter that it's mm. called Katie's Bubbles. People want Katie's Bubbles. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, you know, when I was first getting into this, and you know, well, there's, there was nowhere near as many shaving soaps back then as there are, but I look at Whereas so now we get, what, two, three new artisans every day? <laughs> it seems like it, right? But, so there were, cer there were certain soaps that I didn't order initially, immediately. Katie's Bubbles was one. Ginger's Garden, right? Ginger's Garden, I sound too, too much like a woman's soap, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't get, order that. It was just strictly by the name. Which was foolish in a way, well, but I think a lot of guys you can't judge a book by its cover. Right, initially, yeah, and, and then I heard of the story behind it, and then and then I ordered the LPB, which is I think every is that everyone's first soap with Katie's Bubbles practically. It's not everybody's first soap um, because of course I I've got forty something cents um, available most of the time. Uh, it's definitely my most popular thanks to uh, guys like Nick Shaves who have mm. definitely drawn a lot of attention to it. Um, but it, it's a good soap. Is it my best? No, not even close. Um, but it's a very unique scent. It is, that it is. I, well, I thought it was your best scent. And then LMR came out. Uh -huh. and, then, uh, and then I'm a little bit confused. And then, and then this thing came out. That, I love this soap. I mean, I really, really like this a lot. And then you can thank Paul Robles for that. That's 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 I call him Robles. Is it Robles or Robles? I have no clue how to pronounce his last name, um, but you can thank Paul. Oh, we'll call him Vic. We'll call him Vic. <laughs> um, but but that soap right this there. Is, this is hit. This is Paul's. That, I, 
that that was a collaboration and thought between myself and Vic. Um, and what it came down to was um, he had a s small Facebook group that had a couple of us in it, mm -hmm. and he asked me to make a group soap for it. And this was his favorite uh, cologne growing up. Um, so what we had taken the idea of that scent, um, brought it into a soap format, um, and then Paul and I both happened to be big Wu Tang fans. <laughs> so being that, that it, I knew that with him, but you would never would guess that with uh, you. Uh, my musical tastes are very <laughs> eclectic, um, but when it comes down to it, um, Tommy Hilfiger was probably the biggest um, of the designers in the mid '90s, mm -hmm. and he was the favorite of the Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, um, they they had mentioned him in many of their songs. Um, and the year that, that, that his cologne came out um, was also the year that uh, the Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan released his Liquid Swords album. Mm -hmm. The Liquid Swords album, track number six, is a song called Labels, which is all talking about um, don't trust the label. Um, they're always going to try to get you to do what you want, what, what they want not what you want so live your life the way you want to live it mm -hmm. um and we took that together um 1995 liquid labels nice and that's how we came up with the name um and it was originally released just for his group um but it was too good of a scent to to leave to a 20 jar release so we man you hit a home run with that when, when that... i when i came up with the uh the enhancement to the to the french style formula um i decided to 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 bring it out for everybody Mm. Oh, you should talk about your French style formula and what you've done to enhance it. it it's literally one ingredient different. Jojoba. Jojoba. I said it wrong in my last video. Did, I, I called it jo Well, I didn't know what to call Jojoba? it. Jojoba? I called I it Jojoba, said. I think. <laughs> yes, Jojoba. Yeah. Um, which is actually a, a, a vegetable-based liquid wax. Um, and it's not a miracle ingredient. But when added in the right proportions, it changes the feel of the lather. Mm. It feels silkier, it feels smoother, um, and it gives you a very different post-shave feel than it, the, the traditional formula does. Mm. Yeah, I, I noticed a difference. Your, your other formula. It's not it, bad. No, it's great. Right, but and there, the post-shave was always great. But, but there's some people out different. there that um, coconut oil does not re react well with their, their, their skin chemistry mm -hmm. and it makes them feel dried out. Whereas this... Did this replace coconut oil? No, coconut oil is still in this. There's, yeah. You take the French style formula and you add jojoba onto it mm -hmm. and that's how where you get the plus. Got it. There is no change to the proportion between stearic acid and coconut oil. There's no change to the, the, the lye ratio or anything. It's literally just the addition of jojoba. And but but in terms of loading the brush, in terms of um, lathering the soap, it's, it feels thirstier. The way that the lather itself feels between your fingers mm -hmm. is different, um, and then you get that different post shave feel. Yeah. So all from one ingredient. I was just I was just gonna say that because I I noticed that um, for for a straight shaver, I, I really like the feel of it, and it, to me it even felt a little bit slicker. Well. I, that's all in the eye of the beholder and, and how you whip your brush and get water in there. Mm, yeah, yeah. No matter what, you don't get enough water into any soap and you're not going to get the slickish well, slick that, That's true. That's true. So, and if you put the water in too quick, you're just going to wind up with bare bowls. Mm -hmm. So, because um, it's, I, I think it's been quite successful at the, the new formulation. Well, uh, with the addition of jojoba. Right. Um, is that going to change? Is that now going to be a part of your standard formula? Or are you going to just keep it to a few? Right now, it's been kept to a few releases. Um, I've really got to figure out which way it's going to go. Um, and that's not an easy thing to change when you consider that I've got um, distributors on three continents mm. that are all carrying my product. And I've got to get everybody on board together to, uh, to, yeah. to, to, to make that alteration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would make some people angry if they have the older formula. Right. So if, yeah. if we've got a, a, a distributor in California that that has has product, and I don't coordinate with with them that hey, this is what I'm going to do, and I want to get it done by X date. Um, if I just drop it today, then they wind up in the eyes of the consumer mm -hmm. looking as they have old stock, and then they get mad at me, yeah. and they're not placing more orders and. Then we all wind up in trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So I'll have a bone to pick with you. Uh -oh. So you are to blame for my spending freeze and my wife being angry with me. And you're I, the reason why I started this forum, this, this frag group. I did not push you into doing any of this. No, you didn't, you didn't push me, but in your own way, you kind of told me to stay away from it. And because you told me to stay away from it, that made me want to do it even more. No, what I, I didn't tell you to stay away from it. I warned you that looking into the world of fragrances even further than you already have just from the idea of soap and actually digging into it further with your buying tendencies would be a horrendous idea <laughs> and would de be detrimental to your checking account. Listen, all right, listen guys. So this guy signed me up with the, fo what was that forum? For people that's, that have a problem? Shag. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's a, a, Dustin Wade had started a, um, uh, a, a wet shavers addiction group <laughs> <laughs> so that people that were having trouble holding off on buying the next newest latest greatest thing could go in there and people could support them in saving their money um, and I added Peter into there and it was a bad idea because next time somebody would come up and say oh I so want to buy this um, talk me out of it talk me out of it Peter would say okay don't buy it, but I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes from there to, Colin, I've got this great idea. You and Will and so many guys know so much about fragrances and how to layer this, that, and the other together. I want to be able to set up a group where we can talk about nothing but the smell. How to make the the experience better by mixing together your soap, your aftershave, your... your um, whatever perfume you're using for the day, how you're gonna layer them together and share this information with guys so this way they can really get even more out of this hobby and enjoy it. And I said, Peter, that's a horrible idea, especially for you. <laughs> it's only going to, 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 to make you spend more and more and more because every time somebody says something is good, you're going to Google it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's exactly what I've been doing. So, and now with fragrances, it's not buying a fifteen or twenty dollar or twenty five dollar soap. No. Now we're talking <laughs> and, and uh, 50, 80, 150. Before we hit record, what did I have you smell? Oh, uh, Aventus. Yes, Creed Aventus. It's only three seventy five a bottle, Peter. Yeah. We won't tell Evelyn that though. <laughs> so, but thank God for decants and for samples right. that you can order. Right, and that that ten mil decant that you're gonna pay forty dollars for. Yeah, but I'm gonna order it. Yeah. That is good stuff. That's really good. So let's talk about some of the best soaps and matching frags for your soaps. Now for me, the LP touch on LPV. L LPV is, 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 is easy. Uh, Eau de Bulk or L'Occitane is, 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 like is almost the way like to a go. dead ringer. It's so it, good. It's not a dead ringer, but the way that they, they, they pair together, mm. um, you've got the sweetness, you've got the little bit of spice. Um, it, it works perfect. Did you, were you looking into, did you have that, that fragrance? No, I hadn't, and I, I, I hadn't known it. Was it just coincident? It just, I, I haven't, uh, I bought that, um, probably about six months after I released LPV. Really? Yes. Oh, God, it, it just works so well together. So what, for, for us guys that are still kind of learning, what, what else would be a good, a good match? That's perfect. Well, there's a reason why it's perfect, um, but you've got a variety of things that, that will work together well also. Um, what you have in your hand there, um, which people are going to get mad at you for having in your hand already, uh, <laughs> works very, very well with um, uh, Pauzolari's uh, Viaggio di Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. It will also work very well with um, Hermes Tonka Vetiver. Um, How much are we talking for those frags? Uh, the Viaggio di Africa is thirty five dollars. Sorry, that's good. That 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 lavender from the, pa Palzieri. Yeah, that that that's the 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 line I had told you about. Mm -hmm. but the, the, his private collection it's thirty four to thirty to forty dollars a bottle. And they perform much much higher than their cost. Mm. Um, I've got a I've got a Colonia from that collection, which granted it's not ADP. Yeah. Um, but it's a fraction of the cost and it's a it's a good solid scent. Mm. Um, the the Blue de Provenza, which uh, you bought, is, is an enjoyable lavender. Mm -hmm. um, the the Biagio de Africa is uh, 
is an almost dead ringer for Hermes Tonka Vetiver, um, but it's one tenth the price. Mm. Um, you've got um, he's got a fougere in that line. He's got um, um, uh, an amber and cashmere fragrance. Um, and a couple other things that, that they've got going on in terms of uh, a good quality, um, complex scents at, at an affordable that's, price tag. That's a, a nice price range, right. you know, that 35 where, where that's Where I nice. could say, that's sure, doable. Um, Celtic Knock goes great with Green Irish Tweed, um, but Green Irish Tweed's $375 a bottle. Um, Ocean Grove goes great with Millicime Imperial. Same problem, $375 a bottle. Mm. Um, there's one of the um, um, the Chris Nonagier uh, Ed Hardy fragrances mm -hmm. um, that's very similar to uh, Millicent Imperial. I can't remember the name of it. It's Love and Luck or something like that. Y yeah, that, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. That goes very well with those. And, that, and those itself. are reasonably priced. Those are, those are reasonably priced, yes. And which soap does that go with? Um, Ocean Grove. Oh, really? Yes. Um, but in terms of other soaps, this in sky's the limit on some of them. Mm. Um, you've got ones that are simple essential oil only blends, um, and all you really have to do is hit one note off of the blend, um, and you can pair it into anything. Mm. Yep, that's what I that's what I normally do. So I look like what's in some of the base notes and mid middle notes mm -hmm. of a of a, a fragrance, and that I'll try to kind of match that up a little bit. So with the um, coffee scented soaps, I didn't know what to, to get because I don't have really much good coffee, but Endymion has coffee in it. And so does Mont Blanc uh, Home, Poor Home has some coffee in it. And I thought that that might kind of work. You know what works really well with, uh, with coffee based scents as well for the soap? What's that? Bridge off of it to something spicy. Go to a Bay Rome. Really? Yeah, you'd be surprised how well it works. Yeah. You, um, next time you shave with uh, Irish coffee, um, grab a bottle. Do you have the um, the Derby City Chop Shop? Uh, the small batch shave. No, 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 no. I like the bottle though. Uh, the bottle's great, but it's 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 a it's an awesome Bay Rum. Yeah. Um, but that is a a great combo because mm. you've got um you you've got the coffee and then from there you go to the sweet and spicy Bay Rum, and they complement each other very well. You know, I saw that at Justin's place at uh, Shave Revolution. Mm -hmm. I should have I should have uh, opened it up. Now you're on the wrong side of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, November is coming up. Yeah, November seventh, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't know if I'm going to make that one, but I'm going to think. Yeah, gonna look, I'm going to look into could. it. So this Cape Cod cranberry. So I know you were kind of uh, thinking about the name for it. it I, I liked the bog. You liked the you bog. You didn't go with the bog. I didn't go with the bog because the 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 bog for especially for people outside of the U.S. can have a negative connotation because. Um, they don't go to the bathroom, they go to the box. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's true. Yes. In the UK they say that. Yep. Yep, okay. So I figured that, <laughs> that, 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 that while, while people in the Northeast would get it, um, outside of the Northeast, they don't have cranberry bogs. Mm. Um, you'll find uh, some of the, in, in the Midwest, they, they've got fields where they grow cranberry, but it's not a traditional bog like what we have up here. Mm. Um, I live down, I live six blocks from a retired cranberry bog, and it's been turned into a lake. Um, but, and you've got them all over the place up here in Cape Cod, hence mm -hmm. the Cape Cod Cranberry. This is nice. So it's got cranberry, vetiver, oak, and sea mosses. Uh -huh. It's also got, um, it's also got some cedar in there as well. Really? Very, very nice. So the, the first one that, this, this has more of a um, earthier yes. scent to it than the, the prototype that you had sent out. Yes. So, the, the, which I actually, I liked a lot as well, but I, this is better. The, the I like prototype, um, mm. cranberries don't make an essential oil. So mm -hmm. in order to recreate the scent, it's got to be done synthetically or with a blend of other things. Um, and the problem I found with the, the prototype and a couple others did as well, um, was that there was not enough bottom end to balance out the scent so that the cranberry was coming across very synthetic. Mm. Um, so by uh, strengthening up the bottom end and cutting down on the cranberry just a hair, um, I was able to, to, to balance it much better. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of I don't eat cranberries. And but but this, said, isn't, this isn't cranberry sauce. No, I, it doesn't, doesn't smell, to be, I was gonna say, it doesn't smell like cranberry. It's, I can pick up the berries, mm -hmm. but I don't think cranberries. So for those that don't, are like me, don't like cranberries, don't judge a book by its cover. What's that, from Wu-Tang or something? Yeah, <laughs> don't trust the labels. Yeah, don't trust the labels. This, uh, 
this is really wonderful. Yeah, the, the idea behind this um, was actually uh, a mental collaboration between myself and Chad Irish. Ah. Chad and I were talking back in the spring, um, and he pretty much laid out there the, um, because he, lo he he lives about an hour west of Boston, um, but his favorite place to vacation is just is Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he laid out there that one of his dream scents would be um, a soap that gives him the idea of standing on the side of a cranberry bog at harvest time. Um, so it's not the cranberries, it's not, um, it, it's everything all together, the full experience. Um, you've got the, the salty air coming in off the ocean, you've got the, um, the water, you've got the, um, the, the bit of dankness that the bog has, you've got the dirt, you've got the trees, you've got the berries, and all wrapped together in one. Mm. And that's what I tried you, to you accomplish it. there. You nailed it. So, oh, I, I should I should probably tell everyone. So I was originally supposed to sit next to uh, Colin over here on the couch, but I, I, I needed to sit on t telephone books or something. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see me. I was down down this low. It's not so. I, I, I he said I could have sat on his lap. <laughs> and if you would have sat next to me, I would have had an armrest. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so let's, uh, we probably, how long have we been doing this for? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, sure you, I'm, sure, I'm sure you got some editing to do. Yeah. No, I don't think so, actually. This has been pretty smooth. Okay. So um, what, what's next for, for Katie's? Are you working on anything new? Well, just for people that came up here to Boston, um, I have a couple of jars of the Cape Cod Cranberry tonight. Um, it officially goes for sale on Wednesday, uh, along with a, uh, another soap that I've kept very hush-hush um, in terms of, leaking information out about it um, but it's called Honey Noir don't give it to Ray Pope I, he'll no, do a video no I, I, I did not send this one to, to, to Ray Pope um, because uh, Ray got a prototype of the Cape Cod Cranberry and I told him don't make a video All the only reason I'm sending this to you is so that you can give me feedback so I can make it better um, and the day it arrives, what's the first thing he does? He makes a video. <laughs> he makes a video on YouTube talking all about the soap and doing a one-pass shave with it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but anyway, the, um, are these guys going to be shocked with the, you're, are you handing that out to people or I, I brought are you going to let them just get a sniff? I, I, I brought a couple of samples of the, the Honey Noir so people can get a sniff. Um, I brought a couple jars of the uh, this year's edition of the Boston Berry Patch, um, which was a special soap that I made last year for the uh, Northeast Meetup. Um, and I've got a couple guys that, that begged me to bring things uh, special for them. Um, I guess they wanted it hand delivered instead of ordering it through the mail. Yeah. All right, good, good. So, um, oh, before we leave, we, we need to introduce yes, somebody. We need the world to meet her. Come on over, Gene. <laughs> Come on over, ready? Or you can sit on uh, Mr. Bubbles' lap. Hey, everybody. Oh. Anybody who's ever ordered from us Hi. and got a little thank you card from Mrs. Bubbles, this is Mrs. Bubbles. So, so I had the pleasure of meeting you last night. A bunch of us got together at the bar downstairs. So it was us, it was uh, Fran and Douglas. Fran and Douglas. Chris Beninati. Adam, Adam Baskin. Baskin. And uh, uh, Anthony Esposito. Esposito. So we pretty much closed out the the bar. I think they were just looking to to, to, to throw, to to throw us out. out before Douglas <laughs> dragged them out of gin and tonics. <laughs> but these guys drove in from Jersey, and it took them about seven seven hours. Yeah, unfortunately, we had a lot of traffic we weren't expecting. Yeah, and uh, so it took them longer to get to Boston from Jersey than it did from Douglas Smythe to fly from Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you yeah. should have taken a train like I did. Yeah, should have, could have, would have, but the train would have taken even longer because there's no train service down by me. Ah, uh, so you have to get up to like... Uh, I'd have to take uh, the bus up into New York City and then... Yeah, so either uh, way, you're, you're screwed. Yep. But it was a pleasure meeting you, Jean, yes, last you night. Yes, you too. So, uh, how do you, what do you think about all this stuff with the soaps and... Um... I, Are you enjoying it? I do enjoy it. Sometimes I think that people get a little too excited about some stuff more than I would, but <laughs> it's, true. it's, it's what true. you guys love. Uh, so. my, my wife just, I, you pro, do you do the same thing? But no, you're really into it because it's business. But my I get so, soaps coming in and I say, oh, 
Evelyn, Talia, come here, come here quick. And I, I say, you have to smell this, you have to smell. And they just roll their eyes. And they, they, they do it, but they, they really don't right. want to. And then her next response is, Peter, you bought more? And I say, no, 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 this was a, this was a gift. <laughs> One of my friends uh, gifted this to me, or this is a sample from the manufacturer. Uh, but, what's, but really what put, what put everything over the top with her is those damn frags. The frags and those honing stones really have done me in. <laughs> Should have stuck with the laughing film. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, well, this was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time. To yeah, chat. good to good to see both of you. And I think this was this is good. I think it went well. Thank you, Peter. All right, thank you. All right.